Hey, Physical Science, it's Tuesday, April 21st. I've uh, left that diagram on the board for you so we can pick up right there. Would you turn with me to page 494? And it is in the middle, eh, the last paragraph on page 494, first sentence. The unit of measurement used to quantify an atom's mass is the atomic mass unit called an AMU. Sometimes AMU is abbreviated U. Okay, so here's what I'm going to say. Where is almost all of the mass located in the atom? I finished up yesterday with that. It's in the nucleus. This is not to scale by any stretch of the imagination. If you were to shrink down the nucleus to the size smaller than a dot, it might be getting some degree closer to a scale. Um, but I just blow it up there so you can see what's in the nucleus. There's particles in there called protons and neutrons. Now the mass of each one of those particles is listed on page 494. Would you like to say that the mass of the carbon atom would be the mass of the nucleus? Look on 494 at table three at the bottom. Would you like to say that it is a mass of three times, no, six times, 1.6 times 7 to 6 times 10 to the negative 24 plus, let's see, how many neutrons? Eight. Eight times. 1.6749 times 10 to the negative 24 grams, plus a negligible amount for the electrons. Would you like to see those kinds of numbers? Or would you rather just say the mass of the carbon 14 atom is 14? That's the mass number. 14 what, you say? It's 14. A M U. It's 14 AMUs. Because they can't measure 1.6276 times 10 to the negative 24 grams on a balance. Balances are not that precise. So the way they do the mass of particles in the nucleus, since they're so small, they're subatomic particles, smaller than an atom, is to say atomic mass units, say that, atomic mass units, AMUs, sometimes abbreviated U. So it weighs 14 U or 14 AMUs. And would you rather say 14 or would you rather say uh, six times 1.67, you get the point. Yeah. It's just an abbreviated way of saying masses when you're talking about subatomic nuclei. Okay, now, uh, is the mass of the proton and the mass of the neutron about the same on that table? Yeah, how did they measure that? Well, that's another story. And so they're both basically 1.67 and then times 10 to the negative 24 grams. So there you have it. So it is a matter of mass. In fact, the electrons have a matter of mass as well. They have measured that based upon momentum. Momentum is mass times velocity. They get the momentum of those things when they collide, that kind of thing. Anyway, they can convert it from energy into mass. And what they see here is it's 9.1 times 10 to the negative 24. And if you take 1.6 times 10 to the negative 24, Oh, 9.1 times 10 to the negative 28, excuse me, and divide it by that, you're going to see that the proton and the neutron are about 1,800 times bigger, more massive, way more than the uh, electron. Then we say 1,800 is about 2,000. So these particles in here weigh about 2,000 times more than an electron. So therefore, we say essentially the mass, this is the way we tabulate it in chemistry. 
Can you see that? Yeah. We say proton, neutron, and electron. Protons are positive, electrons are negative. And so what is the charge? Well, the proton, it's plus one. What do they mean one? One what? That's a relative number. It's just one compared to that negative one. The charges are the same, just with opposite sign. That holds the atom together. The neutron has a charge of zero. So that's the particle. This is the charge. And then we've got the mass. And we say that the mass of a proton is what? One. One what? One AMU. You know what I call an AMU? I call it a chunky. Why do I call it a chunky? And I think I'm the only one in the world that calls it a chunky, okay? I call it a chunky just because I want to. It's one of those particles in the nucleus. The neutron has a mass of one. You want to call it 1.6749 times 10 to the negative 24, or do you want grams, or do you want to just say it has a mass of one? One AMU. Both of them. They're approximately the same. And this is so small, we essentially say it's just energy. We just say it has a mass of zero. Okay, so that's the atomic mass unit. And what's the definition of an atomic mass unit? Well, let's read on page 494. Uh, <clears throat> and it says, it doesn't, it doesn't say what the definition is, but I'm going to tell you what it is. It's 1 12th the mass of a carbon-12 atom. Now, what kind of a definition of that? is that well how many particles do you see in this carbon 12 atom you have six protons therefore because it's carbon and you have six neutrons because it has to add up to 12. mass numbers are always whole numbers because they're particles okay so what is the definition of an AMU? It is one twelfth the mass of a carbon twelve atom. What is one twelfth of twelve? One. So what could we also call an AMU? You could call it, you know, by definition, we could call an AMU a chunky. That's what I like to call it. Or a proton. Or a neutron. So an atomic mass unit is one of those particles. Okay, that's nice. It's not like you have a little tray of 12 eggs and you pick one out and you say that's an AMU because it's 1 12th of 12. And these don't count, electrons don't count. So it is basically the mass of a proton or the mass of a neutron. 1 12th the mass of a carbon 12 atom. Now, when you get into chemistry, please get that definition correct. Okay, let's go over to page 497. And when we go over there, by the way, we're going past the word isotope. What is an isotope? It's atoms of the same element, in this case carbon, that have different numbers of neutrons. What's the only difference between carbon 12 
carbon 13 and carbon 14? The answer is the number of neutrons. You see the number of protons is the same. The number of electrons is the same. But the difference is how fat it is. Got a couple extra proton, uh, neutrons. And as a result, carbon-14 is called radioactive. It's radioactive because there's too many neutrons in there for its riches. Uh, it's too big for its riches. It's just falling to pieces. It is radioactive. What does that mean? Well, its nucleus is falling apart slowly. It's just kind of like draining slowly. It's leaking. What is it leaking? It's leaking packages. Packages of two protons and two neutrons from the nucleus. And those are called alpha particles. And it leaks at a specified rate. Okay, it's called half life. And you can read a little more about it on page 496. It leaks predictably. Now, when those two protons and two neutrons, which are called the nucleus of the helium atom or an alpha particle, when those fall out of there, does it change into different elements? Of course it does. But are there more than one atom of uh, carbon-14 in a sample of carbon-14? Yeah. So there's lots of atoms in there that can be falling apart slowly and um, leaking these alpha particles. Radioactivity is a bad boy. Causes well, sickness and illness. Okay. It's been real. See ya.